And hello, happy Thursday, betting community. Welcome to NHL Puck Props, brought to you by Sports Interaction, featuring 14-year NHL veteran Carlo Koliakvo. Josh is away on a warm, sunny vacation, so Jared Hawkman here filling in where it is a little bit less tropical, Carlo, but we still <laughs> think do. Yeah, we got all snow here. That's tro- What's tropical about snow? <laughs> yeah, it's not minus 20, so that's the, uh, that's the only thing yeah, that's, I guess. Uh, that's going. Yeah. Listen, we got a big slate tonight. There's a lot on the line here for coming down the stretch run. Lots of moving parts, playoff pushes still to be determined. For you, what's the most intriguing storyline you're kind of following over the final two weeks of the season? Well, the final two weeks of the season, the storyline I'm following is, you know, matchups, right? Who's going to play who? And obviously the Art Ross race, you know, between McKinnon, McDavid, Kucherov, the Matthews 70 goal chase. Those are the things that are storylines every night. But tonight, the biggest game on the board tonight is Pittsburgh versus Washington. I mean, a a week ago, Pittsburgh was an afterthought. Like nobody even, like they were just completely written off. With a win tonight against Washington, one point out of a playoff spot. So that to me is the game of the night tonight. And that's also a little bit of foreshadowing. We're going to get to that game just shortly because we do have a play for it tonight. But we're going to start actually with another team. You talk about matchups. No one wants to play the Tampa Bay Lightning in the playoffs. Oh. There. Tell you what, future Stanley Cup bet right now, jump on the Tampa Bay Lightning as quick as you can because they're going to be in the playoffs and they're going to be a team nobody wants to play. No, not at all. They had a great win against Toronto last night. But we're actually going to look in the Tampa Montreal game. We're going to go on the other side. We're going to go with Montreal forward. Your Slavkovsky over 0.5 points at minus 125. Again, Tampa Bay, they're playing great, coming off a dominant win in Toronto last night. Listen, they're on a back-to-back here. They have a three and four nights on Saturday when they play at Pittsburgh. So you're probably not seeing Andre Vasilevsky tonight. Jonas Johansson is injured, so it might be third stringer Matt Tompkins. Struggling goalie. Maybe a little letdown spot from the sense of defensive effort opens up some spots for Montreal to score some goals. Mm. Slavkovsky is as hot as getting. We're talking before the show. He just had a nine-game point streak snap. Got back on the horse last night. So he's got points in 10 of his last 11 games. Skating with Caulfield Suzuki on the top power play. Listen, he's minus 125 for a point. You look at Caulfield's minus 160. Suzuki is minus 210. So the value on Slap is phenomenal. I mean, Carl, you, you follow the Habs. You do a lot of that. What, what's really clicked in here for him to make him look like that number one overall pick that he was, you know, just a year ago? Well, what's clicked in is he looks like a completely different player post-All-Star break. Um, his skating has gotten a lot better. Like, a lot of... My analysis with Slavkowski, especially early in the year, he just he was really rough around all the edges. You know, stick handling, skating, you know, playing with the playing into the size of his body, and it just seems like Montreal knew more than what we did because they were just patient with him. They just continued to let him, you know, grow through those growing pains, and now everything's just starting to come together, and you just see it. He's way more confident with the puck. He wants the puck on his stick. He's playing into his size, which is a big power forward, which is something he can absolutely dominate with if he continues to allow his his game to grow into his body. And he's going to the front of the net. Like Suzuki, obviously coming out of the all-star break, has been one of the hottest goal scorers in the league. Helps when you're playing with a guy like that. Caulfield, you know, he potted one the other night, but he's been struggling scoring, but he's still in the mix in the offense. So there's a lot to like about what you're seeing in Slavkowski, and there's a lot to get excited about if this is something that will continue to develop into something bigger and better going into next season. And he's got a good matchup here against Tampa Bay. Like Tampa Bay, one of the best teams in hockey post, uh, 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 what do you call it, the uh, trade deadline, yeah. because they brought in both Duclair and Dumba, who have – fit seamlessly into this group and have given them that extra spark that they needed, but they've got the X factor in that too. And Vasilevsky, but no Vasilevsky tonight. So considering the game they had last night against the Leafs, which was probably the one they circled because it was one that they wanted to make sure they had their best effort and to remind everybody that they're still a team to be reckoned with. This kind of feels like a letdown spot. It's the third game in four nights. They're probably going to get, a backup goalie. We don't know if it's going to be Johansson or Tompkins, but Montreal, they got Florida on a back-to-back the night on Tuesday. They took it to them. They're getting Tampa on a back-to-back. I expect them to bring a solid effort because in the, their, the last two games they've played against 
um, Tampa. They were one-goal games, and Montreal leads the league in one-goal games, 40 of them. Leads the NHL with 40 one-goal games that they played in. So I expect them to bring an effort. I expect them to compete, maybe keep it close, maybe win. And if that happens, you, you count on Slavkowski to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Habs have been a feisty team. And like I said, we have a great spot here for them to catch up. All right, you talked about it earlier. Biggest game in the slate, Pittsburgh versus Washington. Yeah. We're going to get a play there. And I think they're going to be, you know, we talked about Slavkowski who's kind of breaking out and surging. Someone who's been doing this forever and doing it maybe as good as he's ever done is Sidney Crosby, who's been on a rampage. And I think he's going to power the Penguins. So we're going with their team total over three at minus 115. Again, available at Sports Interaction. Listen, the Penguins, they're hot. Like you said, they're now back in the playoff picture. Crazy. Four, five, five. Like five of their last six. You know, they beat Carolina. They beat the Rangers in New York. The offense has scored three plus goals in six straight contests. Averaging almost four and a half per game over the last three weeks. Again, Crosby at 20 points in his last 11 games. Rust and Malkin are hot. But then you see the Capitals, they're starting to slump a little. Lost three straight, 14 goals against, and that's fan. Give them 30 goals over the last seven, fourth worst expected goals against. The over three and a half is a play here as well at plus 130, but I like the minus 115 because SIA gives you that luxury of offering the flat three so we can get a push of mm. that. But again, like, this is listen, it's a Crosby Ovechkin matchup. Another yeah. one, a timeless one, but it's in a playoff like atmosphere. But really, the, the difference here, it's, it's all about Crosby in this matchup, right? He's the one that's going to determine what happens in this game. I mean, if the last couple of games are any indication, then yeah, he, he's going to be the one that determines it. And it's almost like Crosby is on this stick it to the critics tour because of everything that people has been talking about with his future. And it's like, I'm not going to let anybody determine my future. I'm going to be the guy that determined my future. And he's put his team back in a position where they were hanging on by a thread. Now there's a realistic chance. If they win tonight, there's a realistic chance. So you would think this is the game of the year. It's a must win game for Pittsburgh. Cause if they lose this game, then you can throw in the towel and with the way they're playing, I mean, they scored five goals in the third period last game against Jersey. Thinking the down three one, you know, their season's on the line. They come out, they score five, and it's now now they're talking about back to back wins. They're looking at a matchup against Washington with a realistic chance of, you know, maybe being a playoff team. So, and Washington, you mentioned it, man. The goals that they've been giving up, they've they've lost their last three games. Their their play has allowed Pittsburgh to have life in this situation. So with, with everything that's going good with Pittsburgh right now, it'd be hard to bet against them in this matchup. So, you know, the fact that Washington can't keep goals out of their net, I mean, 14 goals, they get up in their last three games. I, I kind of like where you're, where you're leaning on this one. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know it's an outlier. We talked about all these great MVP candidates. If Crosby drags the Penguins into the playoffs after they trade a Gensel, could he get a little look for heart consideration considering well, look, everything he's done? It's a fun story for sure. I mean, and, and you know what? If, if they had five nominees, then yeah, he'd probably get in. But how can you put him in when you have a three horse race right now, every night that are catching people's attention? Like what Crosby's doing at, at age 36, you know, with the, 19th straight season of averaging a point per game, having a career year at this point in his career. Yeah. There's a lot to, there's, there's a lot of good arguments to put him in there, but who do you take out? Are you not taking out Kucherov? You're not taking on McKinney. You're not taking on McDavid. And if Matthew scores 70, he's another guy, you know, that would probably get the nod over him. So it's a fun conversation, but not one I'm that's willing to get my vote. Not for sure. And I see Parker there in the, uh, sorry, Ryan in the chat saying Crosby two point Ross run this is parlay very much in play. I mean, I think if yeah. you know, Pittsburgh's going to score goals, it's going to be Crosby leading the way. Johnny, do you like Crosby over one and a half? I'd probably look at that too. Again, he's going to power this offense. You know, he's yeah. averaging two points per game over the span. Uh, Parker does have a Crosby point and Pittsburgh team total one there. Nice little one just to kind of look at a little low values. Yeah, I think you're going to see some offense here. Uh, and again, go with Pittsburgh to get at least three goals, maybe even more. We're going to finish it off out west. Uh, a game that doesn't have as much meaning for a lot of things. Uh, the Kings <laughs> and the Sharks. Listen, one of my favorite scenarios is to fade the San Jose Sharks. That's what we're yeah. going to do. I'm not enthusiastic about the Kings minus 300 money line price, nor any of the point props. But there is a shots on goal value we're playing. That's Victor Arvidsson over three and a half shots at plus 115. 
He's come back from injury again. He's got over three plus shots in five of his last seven games. He leads the team in shots over that span. He's on a scoring line with Pierre Luc Dubois, Trevor Moore. He's on the top power play unit. Call the Sharks are the Sharks. Yeah, you know, they'll have the third most <laughs> shots on goal a game. The ice, it said Spark first, sorry, the ice is tilted, you know, in their end usually. The reason we're kind of leaning to Arvidsson here. His price is better than Adrian Kempe, and he's been shooting more. Trevor Moore is over two and a half, and it's juiced to minus 165, so plus 115 for Arvidsson. You're going to get four shots. Listen, I know the LA, they're safe in a playoff spot, and they've been slumping, though. They got a big win last night against Seattle, and I know it's the Sharks, and you'd think it's as close as you get to a gimme, but I assume a team like LA is going to want to come out with a strong effort, you know, build some good momentum and good yeah. habits going into the stretch run, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. They they want to They want to basically – um, you know, seal the deal with their their playoff spot. And the, the, the way you do that is continue winning games so that any team behind them right now, which would be the St. Louis Blues, um, you know, you continue to def to deflate their balloon of hope. So, look, I, I Josh knows I'm not a fan of three and a half shots, um, but I do like your angle here with Arvidsson because this could be a get right game for him where he's probably thinking. Okay, man, I missed a lot of the season. You know, I've been getting a lot of chances lately against San Jose. This may be you know, a chance for me to rack up some points. So in doing so, you gotta you gotta adopt the shot mentality. And LA got a big win last night, a uh, convincing one with with Trevor Moore uh getting a hat trick in that one um against the Kraken. And it'd be foolish on their part for them to sort of uh overlook or take this opponent lightly because as much as we'd like to fade the San Jose Sharks, it's still the National Hockey League. If if you don't show up to play and you don't respect your opponent, you could easily be on the losing end of it. So for Arvidsson, this is more I, – I, I would look at this – I would play this as a get-right spot, and you're getting value at, at, at you know, the shot total here. Yeah, you know, plus three and a half are tough. The Sharks are one of the few teams that do give up. They tend to give a lot of bunches. You see some crooked numbers against yeah. them, so we will look at this one. Uh, I see Ryan there asking Pittsburgh to make the playoffs a plus 550. I think that's what, like a 15, 16% implied Yeah, I think uh, we talked about it this morning. It is 16% chance. Look, it, it, that all depends on the result tonight, yeah. right? If they get a result tonight and they beat Washington and now only one point back, yeah, that's great value. But if they lose tonight, it's that that's done. They, there's no yeah. chance of it doing it. And what helps Pittsburgh chances is it's not just the one spot that they're trailing for the wild card. They're they're chasing two spots because of Philly being the team that it is within reach in yeah. the division, where they're four points up on Pittsburgh. But Pittsburgh has a game in hand, and their game in hand is tonight. So. That plus 550, if you believe Pittsburgh's going to win tonight, then yeah, that's incredible value you're going to get on them. If you don't believe they're going to win tonight, then there's no, there's no even, it's not even worth sniffing at that. Yeah, uh, that's a good play. You know, yeah, it's a good point. You almost treat it a little bit like a Pittsburgh money line tonight. Yeah, if you think Pittsburgh's going to win, you like them, then you might want to invest in that playoff right. run too, because that kind of keep kickstarting. Yeah, it could be a nice payoff. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, and that's it. That's that's our place for today, guys. Just kind of recap again. All these plays available at Sports Interaction. Your eyes, Slavkovsky over zero point five points minus one twenty five from Montreal. Pittsburgh Penguins to score three at least three goals minus one fifteen uh, in the biggest game of the night against the Capitals. And then Victor Arvidsson over three and a half shots and goal at plus one fifteen uh, against the Sharks. Big night tonight. Let's hope we do well. Thank you again, to everyone, to come joining us today. Carlo and I will be back tomorrow again with some more props heading into the weekend. Let's hope start off with three and night, and hopefully Josh enjoys his time relaxing. In yeah, the sun. nice, perfect. Yeah, he better come back with a tan, or I won't believe he was actually gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting odds on that one, but it might happen. So, <laughs> thanks, guys. Right. We'll see okay, you folks.